Hi, I'm Mike Warner, this year's president of the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. I would like to welcome you to the 2018 Candidates Forum in partnership with Medina TV. All candidates in contested races were invited to be interviewed. I'm pleased to be joined by Jared Fry of Medina TV for the interviews. We hope you find these interviews informative and helpful as you cast your vote. We'd like to welcome Heidi Carroll, candidate for the Medina County Domestic Relations Judge, to the Greater Medina Chamber and Medina TV Candidates Forum. Let's begin by having you tell us about yourself. Hi, my name is Heidi Carroll, and thank you guys for having me here today. I am a lifelong resident of Medina County. I grew up here in Valley City, Frog Drum, capital of <laughs> Ohio. So, and I recently I got to judge it, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are both worked here throughout my life. My mom is sold real estate, my dad is an accountant. My mother's family is the Nuras. They've been in Medina County for over 100 years as farmers. And I believe many of you guys know Nura Park, who is named after my uncle, Captain Ted P. Nura, who was the first one killed in Vietnam from the Brunswick area. So he was a big time Brunswick football player and heavy in the athletic department. Very good, very good. Um, I'd like you all, for the viewers at home, describe a little bit about what the Medina County Domestic Relations Judge does, what their role is. Their role is to help people go through divorces, dissolutions, and post-degree matters, which would be custody issues, child support, and things that may have to after they've settled the case. Very good. And with that description, what skills or expertise do you feel that you bring uh, to that position? I bring a varied background to my position. And sorry to back up to the first question. I didn't tell you about my educational background. Sure. So I graduated from Buckeye High School in 1993. I went to Benedictine University. I have a molecular biology background. I went to law school at Cleveland Marshall College of Law. And mm -hmm. I also have a healthcare certificate from George Washington University. Uh, my legal experience includes corporate compliance at Cleveland Clinic. Um, Akron General and Ohio Guidestone, which is a nonprofit mental health agency. To your point, my varied legal experience has brought me to the domestic relations court, and I believe that my skills um, are a hard work ethic. Mm -hmm. I will resolve cases in a timely manner. I will bring that. It's a very difficult time in people's lives, and quick resolution is one of my top priorities. I will be present and hold hearings. I bring compassion to the position and a deep understanding that when cases are delayed, you impact people's lives, and in particular, their children, if children are involved in the custody battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you perceive to be um, some of the greatest obstacles to justice and what you're trying to do on the court? I believe some of the greatest obstacles or challenges will be to help people come to resolutions and cases, but I believe that can be done swiftly if you educate them about the process and what is necessary. They're coming into this, they're at a really terrible time in their life and a difficult time in their life and help them ease their emotions and make the process as transparent to them and as possible, so they can go through this. What laws do they have to understand? What educational process do they need to understand? So they can say, this was a fair decision. We came into this, but at the end, we understood the process. We understood the judge was present. We understood that the resolution may not have been one I wanted, but it was one that was just and one that was fair and equitable to all the parties involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm sure one of the duties as being a judge is, is being able to show leadership. Uh, what type of leadership skills uh, will you bring to this position that you would, would like to talk about and may even be different from that of your opponent? I bring strong leadership skills. I've worked in major hospitals and major um, corporations, and one of the things that you have to learn is to be a team player and to understand all aspects of a problem and how you can fit into that solution. And I've brought major projects to the foreground at all the hospitals and universities that I've worked at. So similarly to a judge, it is a position of leadership. 
and one of the greatest things that I hope to impact would be to truly bring um, leadership to the Guardian and Lightum program, which Guardian and Lightums, for those of you who don't know, are appointed for children, and they're to be representing the best interests of a child. And one of the major things that I want to bring is education and training for Guardian and Lightums to bring those um, rules of superintendents to make those part of the local rules. So there's rule superintendents. 48 are part of the Ohio Supreme Court guidelines. They need to be incorporated into our local court rules so the guardians are following them ethically. Also bring training on domestic violence issues to the court and to understand how those issues impact child decisions and custody decisions. So if there is violence involved, it's just not having a protection order put into place, but how does that go through the entire divorce process? Is there litigation abuse? Maybe he stopped hitting the, her or she, depending on who it is, mm -hmm. um, but there could be litigation abuse involved where a person's filing motion and motion and motion in the court, bogging it down because now they feel a sense of entitlement that is costly, extraordinarily costly for families going through that. Abusers seek custody and win custody most of the time because they utilize the courts to re-victimize their, um, their victims, their original victims. Mm -hmm. And that is an area where I really want to shed light on. George Washington, where I received my health care compliance certificate, has an abused um, and domestic violence certificate and program. And I have read in tons of information on that. And it's, it's very important. And it's lost in our court systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the aspects in, in I know it's a tough, tough question to ask, but I'd like to get your input on is there's been various talks over the years, ever since, especially since the parking garage was built uh, a few years ago within the courthouse area, of expansion, renovations, including uh, municipal court, not including municipal court, trying to expand for domestic relations. Um, do you have any thoughts uh, on that process or are open to discussions uh, regarding that? I have not engaged in any openly discussions about how the courthouse should look. I, mm -hmm. My focus has been more on how it should operate more effectively and efficiently. In, um, and maybe some of the tax dollars that I will save will help allow those um, mm -hmm. expansions. There is a lot of money spent on duplicating the current docket system. So currently the court has two docket systems one in domestic relations short court and one held by our clerk of courts, um, Dave Wadsworth. And I don't see a need to spend tax dollars on two docket systems. Mm -hmm. If we can save money there, maybe that will help towards expansions. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to have transparency in the court. You should be able to go online, which my opponent has refused to do for 18 years, and look to see what your case is doing and how it is progressing and where it is moving mm -hmm. and what has been ruled on. Right now you have to drive to the courthouse and pick up your motions. Mm -hmm. You should be able to have those mailed to you or look them up online quite mm -hmm. readily. Mm -hmm. So that transparency is something I strive for and saving tax dollars on visiting judges and um, duplicating systems is, is imperative. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other issues kind of outside the courtroom, but in the, in the election process, is it tends to be the, the history of voters uh, tends to drop off when it comes down to the judicial races. Uh, do you have any thoughts on why that is or why it would be important that people stay on that ballot to make sure they vote for judges? I think if they don't know who we are, mm -hmm. and that has been a big push in the Ohio Supreme Court, know who your candidates are. Mm -hmm. McFan, um, which is a leadership committee, just had all five um, judges who are running speak there and it was wonderful because people really need to understand although I'm on the Republican ticket we are independent mm -hmm. because we have to enforce the law and enact the law so we're independent in that way but really who are you are voting for is their character who are they do you know what they stand for um, ethically how are they um, so that is who, and I encourage anybody to go to my website and look it up, um, carolforjudge.com, to understand who I am and my background more. 
but it's really that push and understanding and that is why I made it such an effort for people to get out and meet individuals mm -hmm. and that is you know we sit behind a bench if I'm elected but we still need to be part of the community and fabric so people understand who we are and what we stand for. And that's a good point too. How, how do you bridge that gap? Because most of the time, the only time anyone sees a judge in action is if they're in there usually be, because of something they've done. Uh, and not, And that's only a small portion of your, your voters. Mm -hmm. How do you bridge that gap and maybe in, in, in get that communication to where voters can see uh, what you do in that role as judge? And I think that's where you become a more integral part of the community, mm -hmm. as my family has been, like I said, throughout the beginning. We've, you know, you go to the fairs, you go to the events, you show up, you shake hands. People need to know who you are. I'm a member of um, St. Martin's Church of Valley City of Tours. You know, I am Catholic. You know, who who are we? What, what are, where do we go? You know, I served the chicken dinner, 1,500 people. <laughs> sure. You know, we, you know, you have to continue that momentum. It, it shouldn't stop in an election year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have an opportunity now to, to talk to the voters and, and tell them a little bit about why you, you feel or, or something you'd like to let them know when they come to vote this year. Um, I really, truly believe that I will be a better judge than my opponent. I have experienced her court firsthand. My 13-month marriage um, ended briefly, but I've spent nine years in her court. And her record is not one that, or I should say my experience has not one that is, is, is unique. Um, the delays in decisions are 12, 13, 14 months. When we are dealing with people's lives and individuals, there shouldn't be long delays in decision-making processes. Not showing up for court, um, frequently absent, sitting there all day long or for several hours paying an attorney, waiting for a judge to show up is detrimental to an individual. $150, $350, whatever you're attorney is charging you, you're taking off work, you're taking off time, that's a very costly day. It needs to be respected, the position. Individuals coming before the court need to be respected, and the time is respect. Also, we are currently $48 million behind in back child support in the county, owed to both custodial parents and the taxpayers. And it's extraordinarily important that you work with the prosecutor in his back on track program and understand why an individual can't pay. And should child support have been adjusted to, so that an arrearage wasn't created? And so there's many things that need to be done. And I truly believe that if elected this November, I will bring a strong work ethic to the court. I will show up on time. And when I will correct many of these problems that have cost Medina County residents thousands of dollars, time, energy, and anxiety that didn't need to occur. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, thank you very much for your time today. We wish you the best of luck this November. Thank you.